is said that all conspiracy theories have a bit of truth to them. This latest one, spearheaded by Tucker Carlson, has caught fire around the world. Tucker Carlson has come out to say that CERN, one of the largest scientific research facilities in the world and home to the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, is building a portal to hell. Who is Tucker Carlson? What research does CERN carry out? And what terrifying truth has Tucker Carlson revealed about CERN? Join us in this video as we explore the possibility of the terrifying truth Tucker Carlson has just revealed about CERN. On July 5, 2023, a Facebook post showed a TikTok video of a woman who claims that CERN scientists are using the machine to open a doorway for demons. According to the caption of the post, CERN is a demonic and evil machine that opens up portals to other dimensions and spiritual worlds, bringing in demons, wicked spirits, and high evil principalities. It suggested a world that reads like the latest season of the Stranger Things series. But when Carlson lent his voice to the subject, it became a bigger issue than a single TikToker's rant on social media. But who is Tucker Carlson? And why is this an issue? Over the years, Tucker Carlson has established himself as a political commentator, TV show host, and social influencer. Carlson is outspoken and unafraid to discuss controversial topics. He has also had many people over on his show to discuss such topics. But since he was fired from Fox News, he has released the news that CERN is seeking to build a portal, a gateway of sorts to hell, or an otherworldly dimension. CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research, a massive research laboratory founded with the sole purpose of understanding what goes on in the universe. With a strong concern for understanding the creation of the universe and how it functions as a whole, CERN has made a name for itself in the world of scientific research. Located at Marin, on the outskirts of Geneva, on the border of France and Switzerland, CERN seeks to mimic the aftermath of the Big Bang. This research laboratory tries to achieve this by sending beams of protons hurtling into one another at close to the speed of light. With almost 3,200 people employed from 21 member states, CERN is the largest collection of the world's particle physicists. All of its member states are European countries, apart from Israel. This, however, does not limit its reach or confine it within the borders of the continent. In total, it has contributions from over 12,000 scientists representing some 600 institutes and universities, 70 countries, and 120 nationalities. Founded in 1954, Switzerland was chosen to be the host country for CERN, largely due to its neutrality when it comes to continental politics. Switzerland is also known for its safeguards against misappropriation of scientific research results for military purposes. This was highly important as it was just a few years after the end of the Second World War. Also, the world was just entering the Cold War. Switzerland also offers other advantages that include its location in the heart of Europe, its tradition as a host country to international organizations, and its stability. These factors are indispensable for carrying out scientific research and developing infrastructures of long duration because unmasking the laws of nature requires at least a minimum of patience. CERN has been the source of great innovations in our world today. If you see a news headline about exotic new subatomic particles, the chances are the discovery was made at CERN. In fact, the World Wide Web was invented in 1989 at CERN by Tim Berners-Lee. He created it as a tool to allow scientists around the world share data. Due to the complex nature of the kinds of research carried out at CERN for particle physics, various instruments have been developed that have found use in other fields and professions. This is due to CERN's open policy about the sharing of knowledge with the general public. At the center of this great innovative and collaborative effort to understand the origin and workings of our universe is the Large Hadron Collider. But between the creation of CERN and the opening of the Large Hadron Collider, CERN has been responsible for a series of groundbreaking discoveries. These discoveries in particle physics include neutral currents, light neutrinos, and the W and Z bosons. The Nobel Prize-winning discovery of the W and Z bosons by Carlo Rubia and Simon van der Meer was made when they collided both protons and antiprotons. These bosons are responsible for the so-called weak nuclear force that causes some radioactive decay. Bosons are tiny bits of energy, also known as quanta, that according to the weird house rules of the subatomic world, transmit forces as they are tossed back and forth in a sort of game of catch between matter particles. 
the W and Z bosons are closely related to photons, which transmit electromagnetic forces or light. The Large Hadron Collider LHC, can recreate conditions that last prevailed when the universe was less than a trillionth of a second old. And this machine is what Tucker Carlson and many others have claimed CERN is using to create a portal between our world and hell. These claims, however, have been refuted by physicists. They say that there is no evidence scientists at CERN are engaged in anything other than scientific activities. In fact, according to Dejan Stojkovic, a physics professor at the University at Buffalo, there is no truth to the claim that scientists at CERN are communicating with demonic entities and using the collider to open up a portal to hell. To create a black hole or a wormhole, even microscopic ones, with our current technology, in the context of our standard theories of gravity, we need an accelerator as big as the whole universe," Stojkovic said. He goes on to say, so there is no chance whatsoever to create such a portal at the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider uses a strong magnetic field to accelerate charged particles, or protons, at very high energies in a circular tunnel. When two beams of these particles collide, detectors, which are located around the beams, record the outcome of these collisions. Since these are previously unexplored energies in a controlled environment, we might expect the production of some new elementary particles that we did not know existed, Stojkovic said. He ends by saying, however, these are microscopic particles, so there is no chance such a portal would open. So, what is a Large Hadron Collider? And what does it do? The Large Hadron Collider, also known as the LHC, is a particle accelerator. This is a device that boosts subatomic particles to enormous energies in a controlled way so that scientists can study the resulting interactions. To rephrase, the LHC gets subatomic particles extremely excited and energetic and causes them to hit one another in a controlled environment. They do this so that they can monitor how they interact with one another and what data they can retrieve to help them understand how the universe works. The large in LHC is a big understatement. The LHC is by far the biggest accelerator in the world right now, occupying a circular tunnel nearly 17 miles in circumference. The middle letter, H stands for hadron. This is the generic name for composite LHC particles, such as protons, that are made up of smaller particles called quarks. Lastly, the C stands for collider. This is the main task of this machine. Here, the LHC accelerates two particle beams in opposite directions, and all the action takes place when the beams collide. Like every physics experiment carried out everywhere in the world, the LHC seeks to test certain theoretical predictions. To be precise, the LHC aims to test what is called the standard model of particle physics and to see if there are any holes in them. While this may sound strange, physicists are trying to find a few holes in the standard model because some things cannot be explained until they do. Although the standard model can explain almost all results in particle physics, there are some questions left unanswered, such as what are dark matter and dark energy? Also, why is there more matter than antimatter? The LHC is designed to help answer these important questions, seeing that dark matter and dark energy both consist of about 95% of the universe. Fun fact, the Large Hadron Collider is colder than outer space. To be precise, it is less than 2 degrees Fahrenheit almost at absolute zero. To achieve this, a cryogenic cooling system is utilized to keep it cold for the sake of the superconductor electromagnets, which send proton beams hurtling toward one another in a loop 100 meters below the ground. This extremely low level of temperature is needed to keep the collider from blowing up as it propels 200 trillion protons around an approximately 17 miles long ring at a rate of 11,000 times per second. Inside the collider, beams of protons are sent hurtling down and around the ring with a massive force that makes them generate a myriad of subatomic particles, including the Higgs boson. At every single second, over 40 million collisions happen inside the collider. Data from these collisions are then collated by massive detectors lined around the collider. The discovery of the Higgs boson is one of the LHC's most significant breakthroughs. Before the discovery of the Higgs on July 4, 2012, all that physicists had was a theory of how elementary particles like electrons and quarks got their mass, but they could not prove it. This conundrum was so frustrating that Leon Letterman, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, wanted to title his 1993 book on the subject The Goddamn Particle. If the universe is the answer, what is the question? 
Noticing, however, that this title could be too controversial, his publishers changed it to The God Particle. This eventually still got a few people angry, especially those who felt science and religion should never meet. According to scientists, the Higgs boson, although called the God Particle, has nothing to do with either proving or disproving the existence of God. Instead, it helps to cement the standard model. This model is a physics theory developed in the 60s which sought to identify the building blocks of matter and the forces that control them. The Higgs boson was one of the missing pieces holding the picture together and giving credence to the theory. In addition to the discovery of the Higgs boson, the physics magazine CERN Courier states that the Large Hadron Collider has also found around 60 previously unknown hadrons. While these discoveries are exciting, many scientists who have worked on alternative theories have expressed disappointment at the inability of the LHC to move beyond the standard model. Many scientists who had great expectations for the LHC have expressed their disappointment also at its struggles to live up to expectations. Some scientists had hoped that it would unlock the secrets of dark matter or dark energy. One theoretical physicist, Erez Etzion, believed it might advance our understanding of other dimensions. None of it since the Higgs boson discovery has happened, apart from when a weasel found its way into the wiring and died, shutting the whole system down. Sabine Hassenfelder, former physicist and researcher at the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies, simply said, Let's be honest, it's disappointing. In 2018, though, the LHC was taken offline for upgrades. The official press release said the outage would last for two years. According to CERN, upon its revival, it would achieve higher beam intensities. The LHC was brought back online in 2022 and began Run 3 on July 5, 2022. Run 3 is the third science run of the LHC. It is designed to build on the discoveries made during Run 1, 2009-2013, and Run 2, 2015-2018, and also perform experiments until 2024. With advancements in physics, scientists are looking forward to making use of the LHC's new upgrades to investigate the Higgs boson and also to explore dark matter. There is also an effort to use these upgrades to expand our understanding of the standard model, thus helping us have a more unified idea of all known fundamental forces and elementary particles in the universe. Among the new upgrades is the increase in the power of the LHC's injectors, which feed beams of accelerated particles into the collider. When the collider was shut down in 2018, it could only accelerate beams up to an energy of 6.5 tera electron volts. According to official reports, this value has been raised to 6.8 tera electron volts. For this significant increase in the energy level of the proton beams to be made possible, there was a need to train the systems. According to a CERN statement, the thousands of superconducting magnets whose fields direct the beams around their trajectory need to grow accustomed to much stronger currents after a long period of inactivity during LS2. Due to the inactivity for a few years, CERN does what it calls magnet training, which is simply getting the equipment up to speed for the upgrades. This training consists of around 12,000 individual tests. With magnet training in place and the proton beams more powerful than ever, the LHC will be able to create collisions at higher energies than ever before, thus expanding what is deemed possible in particle physics. Run 3 is scheduled to run till 2024, which would lead to another shutdown of the collider. This is to allow for more upgrades for the already massive particle accelerator. Once this upgrade is complete, the LHC will be renamed the High Luminosity Large Hadron Collider, when it comes back online in 2028. So how does the Large Hadron Collider work? Before the particles are injected into the collider, they are passed through a group of smaller accelerators that gradually increase their speed, according to a CERN LHC report. The result is two beams traveling in opposite directions around the LHC at virtually the speed of light. To keep these beams on their circular trajectories, a strong magnetic field is created to bend the path of electrically charged particles. Around the LHC's massive ring are four points that serve as centers where the opposing beams are brought together and made to collide. As the particles smash against one another at such high speed and with massive energies, a myriad of new particles are created. They often live long enough for scientists to know what was created. With millions of collisions happening every second, monitoring every single one is a task that cannot be undertaken. To counteract this, the LHC has an array of sophisticated particle detectors. 
These detectors are made up of layers of subdetectors designed to measure certain particle properties or to look for specific types of particles. For example, calorimeters measure a particle's energy, while the curving track of a particle in a magnetic field reveals information about its electric charge and momentum. Two of the four collision points around the circumference of the LHC are occupied by large general-purpose detectors. These include the compact muon solenoid CMS, which can be thought of as a giant 3D camera, snapping images of particles up to 40 million times per second. The trajectory of the particles inside the detector is controlled by a gigantic electromagnet called a solenoid. This electromagnet weighs about 12,500 tons, and it's quite compact. Muon refers to an elusive particle similar to the electron but much more massive, which requires its array of subdetectors wrapped around the solenoid. The LHC's other general-purpose detector is the ATLAS, a toroidal LHC apparatus. It functions similarly to the CMS but is different in how it does its detection and how its subsystems and magnets are designed. Also, it is less compact when compared to the CMS as it occupies a greater volume than any other particle detector ever built. Also, one of the many experiments that have been carried out includes trying to figure out why the universe contains more matter than antimatter. It is a scientific fact, and a mystery at that, that there is a striking asymmetry between matter and antimatter. The universe currently has more matter than antimatter. This is puzzling, as according to the Big Bang Theory, the universe must have started with equal amounts of both. Yet very early on, probably within the first second of the universe's existence, virtually all the antimatter had disappeared, and only the normal matter we see today was left. This asymmetry or disparity is officially referred to as the CP violation, and studying it is one of the main aims of the Large Hadron Collider's LHCb experiment. While all hadrons are made up of quarks, the LHCb is designed to detect particles that include a particularly rare type of quark known as beauty. Studying CP violation in particles that contain beauty is one of the most promising ways to shed light on the emergence of matter-antimatter asymmetry in the early universe. Apart from ongoing work at the LHC, CERN is carrying out other important experiments. One of them is an attempt by scientists to link particle physics to climate science at the CERN's proton synchrotron. This accelerator is a smaller and less sophisticated accelerator than the LHC, but it's still capable of carrying out remarkable tasks. CERN has named the Climate Experiment Cloud, which gives the idea of what the project is about. The name, however, stands for Cosmics Leaving Outdoor Droplets. Cosmic rays are constantly bombarding our planet, and there is a theory that these rays play a role in cloud formation by seeding tiny water droplets. This study process is not easy to achieve in the real atmosphere with real cosmic rays, so CERN is creating its cosmic rays with the accelerator. These rays are then fired into an artificial atmosphere, where their effects can be studied much more closely. Every year, tens of thousands of scientists and researchers work at the CERN to broaden our knowledge of the universe and expand human capabilities. Casting a long shadow over their backs are speculations about the nature of their work in CERN. Over the years, people have spoken up about what could go wrong. And when you have a well-known, outspoken, and bold person like Tucker Carlson speaking out against you, it can be extremely hard to convince the public of your innocence. The coming years will tell the truth, but so far, absolutely nothing at CERN suggests that scientists are building a multi-dimensional portal to hell. Neither will a black hole arise to swallow us whole. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.